Crazy Me, the finale. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying. To learn to grow and brew, and to take control of your food, hit subscribe now, and check out the other links in the description below that you may find helpful. And subscribe. It's important. <laughs> anyway, so like a couple months ago, uh, let's see here, 11-12-2018, um, November 12, 2018, we made Crazen Meat, which if you didn't see that, you can find the video, it might pop up somewhere on the screen. I have to be careful saying that because YouTube only lets us have so many of those pop-up things and we've run out and people have getting really upset with me about it. But anyway, so on the 12th of November we made this. On the 12th of December we racked it off of the Crazins and we took a reading. Well, now it's the 16th of January, so we're going to do it again and take another reading. Now this mead was really meant to be ready in like four weeks. Life gets in the way. And this is proof that you don't have to rack it too soon. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to make itself. So what we're going to do, we're going to rack it. And what do we do when we rack? We always sanitize all of our stuff in... The Red Bucket of Sanitization! So now, we're also going to use the paint bucket of... Uh, racking? Racking. Huh, whatever. And I'm going to rack it into a pitcher because, now this picture has been sanitized too, because what we're going to do when we're done is we're going to bottle this and we're going to have a little bit of a taste. Um, so what I want to do is get my auto siphon. Notice there's no bottling wand on the end. And I like to use an auto siphon instead of just a regular siphon because I don't want to have to put my mouth on the end or anything like that. You can use it where you just do this and you submerge the whole thing underwater, but it's kind of nuts. So just do this. Now, I know this lease is kind of floaty, so I'm going to stick this in the bottom here, and I'm going to go only about halfway down, just in, and I'm going to start very carefully to start that siphon up. I don't want to upset too much. There we go. Getting it. It's getting it. Okay. I'm going to have my lovely assistant hold that. So also, when we did this last, um, if you remember, it finished at 1080, which I thought was a little bit high, and there's a variety of reasons why that could have happened, um, you know. So I'm not going to worry about it. What we're, what we're hoping for is that it dropped a little bit, and it's been like a month. I gave it a little extra time on purpose just to see what would happen. It still bubbled very, very slowly, which I know is not really truly a sign of fermentation, but it's a sign that something is happening. There's some off-gassing going on still. So I took that as, yeah, it might have dropped a few more points. But regardless, it was tasty before, and other people have made this already, and they loved it, and it came out great. So it's entirely possible that I just got a little bit of a stuck fermentation. It happens from time to time. No big deal. Derek is being very careful on this to not suck up any of the lease at the bottom. We are going to lose some product on this because I shook it up slightly when I brought it from It happens. Um, you're, you're doing good though. I think you're okay. It cleared out nicely, as you can see. Um, you probably can't see it in here. Um, but in here, it, it actually was nice and ruby-like. It, it was very jewel-like. Um, it's a dark product, so they always look a little bit, uh, you know, there's depth. Okay, so we just remove this carefully so as not to leak all over the place. A little bit there. We're going to squirt back in. There we go. Okay, now before we go any further, what I want to do is uh, degas this. We're going to take that spoon, I'm going to dunk it. And the sanitizing water, okay? Anything that comes in contact with your brew, you really want to have it sanitized. Now, when I say degas, what why am I degassing? A lot of people have asked. The reason I degas is so that A, I don't have carbonation in the bottle. This bottle is I'm reusing it, it's an old sangria bottle. It can't hold carbonation. I don't want carbonation in there. And there's gases in here and things like that that might not taste real good. So I want to get them out. And I also know that the first time around I didn't fully degas on purpose because I knew it was gonna sit for a while. So I'm just going to give this some stirs. It smells good.
Now I know somebody's going to ask me about oxidation. And yes, there is a risk of oxidation anytime you do something like this. What I am doing though, because I'm doing it in a closed container, okay, and we know that carbon dioxide is heavier than, than oxygen and even the air around it, by stirring it like this and releasing the gas and then breaking that stir, I'm releasing carbon dioxide into that pitcher. Very little air and oxygen is actually going to come in contact with us. I'm pretty content that this has been degassed well enough. Um, I might still have a little bit in there, but at the same time too, as I said, I'd rather let that come out a little bit naturally so that maybe uh, if there was any excess residual anything, it comes out rather than oxygen getting in so no bad stuff happens. But what we're going to do now is take a reading on this. And to do that, I use a turkey baser, which has been sanitized. I'm using a, a graduated cylinder. I wanted to call it a test tube. It's not a test tube. It's a graduated cylinder. Um, and I'm going to use a hydrometer. Those of you that have seen our videos, you've seen this before, but not everybody watches every time. So, you know. Thank you. Okay, now, all you do, take your hydrometer, which has been sanitized, and drop it in. Now, be careful that you don't overflow. And then I give it a little spin. And let's see where it sits to. Okay, it's a 1080. <laughs> it's gonna be sweet. Now, there's things you can do with this. You can fortify this to raise the ABV and lower the apparent sweetness. To do that, Everclear, vodka, rum, if you really wanted to. And you just figure out the parts per, and then you can add some and, you know, do that sort of thing. You can dilute it if you want to, but that could restart a fermentation. Me, I'm probably going to drink it the way it is and treat it like a dessert wine. 1080 is very sweet, even for me. I like things in the 1030 to 1040 range sometimes, but uh, 1080 is a little bit much. But I'm going to just pour some of this off into glasses here. We're not going to taste it quite yet. I'm just pouring it off. I'm just going to leave it there tauntingly. <laughs> It, but as you can see, it has a really beautiful color. That's just really nice. Hmm. Interesting. It smells awesome. Now, you might be tempted, because I have this in a pitcher, to just pour it in there. No, what you want to actually do is siphon it in. Now, in this case, I don't really need to use the bottling wand, because I believe this is about the same amount that goes into this. I'm using this big bottle because this stuff ain't going to last real long. <laughs> so I figure I'll just put it all in one bottle, keep it easy. Now, if I was going to store this for more than, say, a month or two, I wouldn't be using a screw cap like this. There's been some talk that you can replace them. I've never actually seen screw cap replacements, but um, apparently you can. For me, though, for this purpose, for what we're going to have this for, like I'm probably going to bring it over to Savvy and Ben's next time we see them in a week or two. and it'll be gone. So I'm not, I'm not going to worry too much about exactly how it's being stored, as long as it's not stored badly. If we were going to intend to do this for long-term storage... I'd probably use the swing tops. Our bottle of choice is the swing tops. Or cork them, cap them, whatever you got to do. Fawn says hello. Come here. Come That's here. what that means. I speak Fawn. Apparently. Somebody wanted to say hello. This is Vaughn. Who is now freaking out because oh, Daddy's here. She's Mommy's girl. She prefers to be sitting on my lap pretty much all the time. I prefer she demands to be sitting on my lap <laughs> all the time. So when we do filming, she's very cranky because I'm not sitting in my chair working at my computer. Um, thus the meowing. Yeah. Thus the consternation on my face. <laughs> You, she doesn't really like being held. She just wants the lap to be available. So right about now, it's to here. And there's still that much to go. I'm starting to question my bottle choice. It's supposed to be a one and a half liter that it came out of, and this is a one and a half liter bottle, so you would think. Maybe it's gonna be a race, we'll see. It is that far from the top. <laughs> but my bottle wasn't quite big enough. 
Which means, oh no, I'm gonna have to drink this. I'm so sad. Yeah. So there's a little bit left. That might be, believe it or not, like a small swing top bottle. Anyway, so we have a whole bottle of this. And now, we taste it. Glad I poured out these glasses, actually. Okay, as we do with all of our tastings, first thing is appearance, color. Roll around the glass a little bit. It looks like a really nice red wine, like a, a very light colored red wine, almost a rosé, but not quite. Um, then smell. Heavy honey smell. Like, yep. heavy honey. But I'm getting the, the cranberry thing, too. Yep. Anything else you're getting on it? Nope. It's like really good cranberry juice mixed with honey. Anyway, cilantro. There's no doubting that this is a honey-based beverage. There's no doubting this would be a dessert wine. Um, I'm not sure the ABV will probably be somewhere in here. I don't think it's very high, though, because it might have only had a potential to go to maybe 12 or so, and I think it stopped pretty far short of that. Probably somewhere like 8 to 9, I'm guessing. Um, but it's it's actually really good. Mm -hmm. I, I like this. Some people really like dry meads and dry wines. I've never been a dry mead type of person. I always like them sweet. I would not say this is sickly sweet, though. The cranberry cuts that just a little bit. The tartness of the cranberries actually <laughs> yeah. helps. If this was like a, a sweeter fruit, it might be too much. Mm -hmm. But for the cranberry, actually, I really like it like this. Yeah. I could drink this for a very long time. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit the subscribe icon down below and don't forget to hit that little bell. That way you get notified of everything we do. And if you really like what we do, consider becoming a patron. Information in the descriptions of all of our videos. Thanks guys, have a great day. You need to watch that. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs>